Hey guys, it's Rudy coming at you live from Palm Beach in Florida. It is Monday, it is August the 5th. The markets are crashing as they have been for Thursday, Friday, and today. And um, you know, sometimes we feel like we wanna jump in because uh, we wanna buy the dip, but sometimes all you end up doing is catching a falling knife. So it's always better to be just a little bit patient, try not to time the market, and perhaps see if there's a bit of a change in the uh, market dynamics or a compelling reason why there might be a change in effect. For instance, uh, let's say the Fed in the United States uh, starts to change rates, interest rates and cutting rates, you know, so um, there might be a, a sort of, regardless of, as fact, uh, regardless of how fictitious it is or how manipulated the market is, there might be a reason why it would be better to get in a little bit later and be patient for for instance on a day like today as opposed to just dump, jumping in boots and all what i want to do is take a few minutes and talk about uranium i don't talk about uranium too much i have uh, quite a few large positions in my portfolio uh, which includes some uranium assets the largest by far is cameco and then i have some smaller positions in some smaller cap companies including paladin which is an australian miner with assets in namibia and southern africa and uh, fission uranium in Canada, which has actually just been acquired by Paladin. Uh, but what I want to do today is just take a few minutes and talk a little bit about Cameco, uh, which of course has been on a tear. And then suddenly, uh, lately, that's been on a very rapid decline, right? So um, as uh, confident and seasoned investors, we don't panic when these things happen. We look for a potential buying opportunity. Today is not the day, so uh, we want to be a little bit patient. And we also want to make sure that we do our due diligence and make sure that we track the market dynamics as it relates to the particular commodity or the industry or the sector, right? So Cameco is a uranium mine. And of course, uranium is used for uh, nuclear power. Now, what happened last week? Cameco just missed earnings per share by 76%. Analysts, analysts <laughs> right? What do analysts think will happen next? Now, I do want to make a note here just for you to keep in mind that if I talk about Cameco, you might see prices uh, of around $50, but you could also see prices of around $35. And the reason for that is that Cameco changes uh, trades on two major exchanges. One of them is the Toronto Stock Exchange, where it has the ticker symbol CCO, and the other one is the New York Stock Exchange, where it has the ticker symbol CCJ. So if you see prices that don't necessarily align or they uh, look different to uh, the previous slide that I've just showed you. That's the reason why, right? I'm reporting in two, two different currencies. When I go through some of these slides, you'll notice that as I share the content with you. So what happened? Cameco on Friday missed earnings with its largest, uh, with its latest quarterly results, disappointing overly optimistic forecasters. Now that in real term is the problem, right? Cameco delivered a huge earnings miss, but it's not so much because Cameco's earnings miss is such a terrible uh, end of the world statement. It's rather that the forecasters, or in this case, the analyst analysts, were getting ahead of themselves and expecting way, way, way too much from Cameco in terms of their quarterly report. One quarter in the real in the real scheme of things doesn't really make much of a difference if you're a longer term investor. The revenue came in at around 600 million CA is Canadian dollars, and the earnings per share of around eight cents fell well short of expectations. The analysts, some analysts were expecting earnings per share of 90 cents. Anyway, uh, they missed the earnings by about 76% or so. Analysts typically update the forecast at the end of each earnings report, and we can judge from the estimates, blah, 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 analysts, analysts. What you need to do is you need to decide whether this is a sector you want to invest in. Firstly, it's energy. Secondly, it's mining. Then it's uranium. And then, of course, it's nuclear energy, which is clean energy the cleanest energy source by far. So this is a snapshot. Firstly, if we look in the rear view mirror, that's the red arrow over here up to sort of halfway through the slide, you can see what ha happened in the past, right? So uh, Cameco, this blue line over here is revenue. The revenue has been increasing nicely. I like to invest in companies that has increasing revenue. So uh, for that purposes, in terms of this discussion, I'm not talking about companies that are involved in exploration, uh, or perhaps in the early stages of development, I'm actually talking about producers, which is what Cameco is. It's producing uranium mine. The uh, pinkish line at the bottom here is free cash flow, and the green, light bluish line, whatever, 
is earnings, right? I'm not sure how the colors come up on your monitor because sometimes they vary. So uh, the first blue line here at the top is revenue, nice growth line. And then the right-hand side of the screen, so where I am now, it shows you sort of what the analyst analysts are expecting on a go forward basis. And you can see the timeline at the bottom of the um, legend here. So if you look at the uh, the individual lines, so I talked about revenue and then um, cash from operations and free cash flow. So the sort of pinkish colored line here is free cash flow. You see it's reasonably static, but earnings uh, are predicted to rise quite rapidly, right? But sometimes the analysts get ahead of themselves and we shouldn't pay too much attention to them, especially not on a quarterly basis. Now, most of the data that I'm sharing with you today are snapshots that I took uh, over the weekend, which means it's up to date as of Friday, which doesn't include today's crash. But as I said at the start, it might not be uh, time for you to buy just yet if you were planning to buy Cameco at all. It might be prudent to just wait a little bit. Eight analysts predict revenues of $3.02 billion in 2024. That's more or less accurate, right? So we're more than halfway through the year and you can take that um, uh, analyst prediction sort of to the bank and say Cameco is gonna come in at about $3 billion, which is a 14% increase in its revenue over the past TTM means trailing 12 months. The earnings per share predicted to leap 135% to $1.39. So this is for the year, right? So revenues are around $3 billion and earnings per share about a buck 39, which is Canadian dollars, which is approximately one US dollar. The consensus price target is broadly unchanged. So regardless of the quarterly results that were announced last week, the price target is broadly unchanged at around 77 Canadian dollars. And this is what I mentioned at the start, right? So if I'm talking about 70 something bucks or whatever, uh, or even 50, it's Canadian dollars. If I'm talking about 30, 35 dollars, it's US dollars. So you'll be able to pick up on that quite easily. Place these forecasts into context against the industry itself, right? Measure it against its peers. Latest estimates expect Cameco's growth to accelerate meaningfully with 30% forecasted annualized revenue growth. It's noticeably faster than its historical growth of only 6%, right? So 6% is sort of in line with the Dow for, uh, since its inception, over 100 years, the Dow has been sort of averaging around 6% annually. Cameco has been averaging about 6% annually over the past five years, but now the forecasted annual revenue growth is 30% or thereabouts on a go-forward basis. Companies in the same industry are forecast to grow their revenue at about 5% annually, which uh, leads back to the previous slide that I showed you with the light blue revenue line that is slowly kind of ticking its way up, right? Factoring in the most uh, forecast acceleration in revenue, it's pretty clear that Cameco is expected to grow much faster than its industry, right? So the tokens and the signs are there for a, for you to be somewhat cautiously bullish in general. Now, here I am at a 30 something dollar price. So this was as of Friday's close last week, which is August the 2nd. Cameco closed at about 38 bucks. For the day, it was down about six, 7% today. It's down another six, 7% or so. So uh, another, you know, three, four dollars from that price. But if you look at it over a period, and for the majority of the people watching this channel, I'm assuming that you have a longer term horizon than day traders. In other words, you might be in a stock for about three, five years or so. If you had opened a position in August, so uh, five years ago from today, sorry, three years ago from today, in August 2021, you would have um, opened your position at around $17, $18. And the reason why that's important is because 17 times two is 34 or 18 times two is 36 and sort of 34, 35, 36 bucks on the US exchanges where Cameco is trading today, which means over the past three years, you'd be up 100%. If you are up 100%, generally over five years, you're growing at about 15% per year. So this has grown faster than that. And it's been on a tear as of late despite this most recent dip. Um, it might dip a little more, and then we can expect to see an uptick again. Uh, the two largest uranium miners are Cameco and Kazatomprom in Kazakhstan. And uh, there's ongoing turmoil in terms of Kazatomprom. So uh, Cameco seems to be sort of the steady eddy in terms of the investment thesis uh, for uranium right now unless you want to play in the small cap space, which as I said at the start, I do a little bit as well. Volume on Friday was above average, 
Uh, I don't think for a minute that the majority of people were just getting out of chemical and selling it. So when um, it, people uh, report on the on the, on the turmoil in the market and the volatility in the market, they always say a massive sell off today. Well, I managed money for myself and for uh, a number of other people, and none of us sold anything at all. So the massive sell off is more a media propaganda story than uh, an actual event. I'm not saying people didn't sell. I'm just saying they over blow these stories and inflate the uh, the news in order to uh, get clicks and get eyeballs on, on TV screens. The PE ratio, of course, is ridiculous, 96. We want to uh, not get into a, a new position at 96 times unless uh, there's an obvious reason for enormous future growth. Cameco does look like a growth company. Uh, I'm not sure or confident that the uh, current price is even fair value, but I'm going to show you Morningstar in just a minute, then you can have the expert opinion on that. So what I'm actually saying is this uh, $55 price here might be a little too high uh, as it is as of today. The 52-week high was $76, so it's uh, pulled back sharply since then. And uh, currently, or as of Friday, the bid was around $52. So um, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Cameco trading sort of, depending on which exchange you are trading on, uh, more sort of in the high 40s within the next few days or so. The 52-week low was $42. So, um, you know, if you can pick it up at around $45, $47, $48, you're probably doing okay. Uh, I added this little arrow here at the bottom, DRIP eligible. A DRIP is a dividend reinvestment program. Uh, if it's eligible, I usually en enroll in the DRIP anyway because what I'd like to do is reinvest my dividends and just buy more stocks, whether the stock is going up or down, it doesn't matter. I'm actually cost averaging by doing that. If you are investing in Cameco, you're not investing for its dividend because it's too small. It's uh, immaterial and meaningless. So uh, that's not a compelling reason for you to invest in Cameco at all. You are actually investing in Cameco because you believe it'll be a growth stock. Over the past three years, as I mentioned a, a minute ago, it's actually up 137%, even though the rate of return year to date is negative uh, minus 8%. Now, I've been in Cameco for a few years, so I have the benefit of having a, a nice low cost basis. And as a result, the uh, rate of return currently, which is as of today, probably minus 12, minus 13 percent, doesn't hurt me too much because overall my position is well up above 137 percent. So you're the smart people, right? So Morningstar is actually one of those uh, very detailed, very comprehensive technical analysis reports that I actually enjoy looking at. Um, I like Morningstar. Uh, it's very detailed and it usually gives you a good indication of what's happening with the stock. So backward looking, Morningstar is giving Cameco a four star rating, which is good, it's four out of five. Fair value on the stock right now, they're saying is about $61 Canadian. So um, you can do your own math there and kind of look at where it's currently trading, depending on which exchange you could possibly buy it uh, on if you want to buy into Cameco. And the rate of return estimate, is negative 36% because overvalued, right? So as I said, I'm expecting it to pull back. So don't jump in boots and all. Just because over the past, what, three days or so, today it's down, I don't know, 6%, 7%. Friday, it was down 7% or so. And the day before that, prior to the reporting the earnings, it was also down 3 or 4% or so. So over the past few days, it's actually down between 15 and 20%. Uh, and it's probably still a little bit overvalued. So uh, just hold your horses if you want to get in. Um, the analysts still, in general, uh, by far, say it's either a buy. So uh, here we've got 15 analysts, 10 say it's a buy, 4 say it's a strong buy, and only one of them says it's a hold, right? Uh, I'd hold it right now because I already have a position in Cameco, uh, but I certainly wouldn't go with the strong buy right now. Uh, if you want to buy, you could probably nibble just a little. If it pulls back a little bit more, you can uh, buy a little bit more and cost average. Uh, but you can see the sentiment from a technical point of view is overwhelmingly negative or bearish, short-term, intermediate-term, even though it dips a little long-term. Over the long-term, Cameco is going to be just fine. Uh, but for now, it's under a little bit of pressure along with its peers. Comparison by market cap. So this is not really a good comparison, even though Schwab gave me this information. Sorry, RBC Invest Direct gave me this information here because a comparison by market cap should really compare similar sized companies in terms of market cap, market cap or market valuation, the market capitalization being all the outstanding shares multiplied by the current stock price. Uh, here, I'd like to see a, com a peer comparison of similar sized peers rather than uh, this variance we see here in terms of 
micro caps and small caps. And um, when we look at this, uh, the reason why I put an arrow next to Denison Mines, which has a $2 billion Canadian market cap is because I have had a position in Denison Mines before. I don't currently have a position in Denison Mines, but uh, I'd probably put this one on my watch list and, uh, and track it, ticker symbol DML, that's if you're buying it in Canada. Um, add it to your watch list. You know, if it pulls back sharply, uh, you could nibble on that one too. Denison Mines uh, has no debt. It's a, it's a great company to invest in, but you need to be super patient. And uh, there's always a possibility that one of the bigger guys like Cameco, that's 10, 10 times the size of Denison, might uh, step up somewhere along the line and just acquire it. And, um, you know, then it's uh, cha-ching, it's payday, right? Uh, Cameco, in addition to being 10 times the size of Denison, right at the bottom here, you can also see they have 2,400 employees. So it's uh, it's, it's a mid-sized mid company in Canadian terms. It's quite large, $22 billion market cap, uh, but it's not that big. The other guys over here, if you want to play with small cap companies, there are a couple of them that I'm familiar with. Um, I mean, GoVX uh, has just tanked completely because they effectively uh, are under threat uh, of losing all their assets in Niger, uh, leaving them only with their Zambian assets. So uh, GoVX is probably a super high risk buy right now, but the stock is pretty much tanked. It's, uh, last time I looked, it was trading at around $0.04 cents per share. Another one that you could uh, possibly take a look at is Myriad Uranium. Uh, they have uh, some great assets in Wyoming. They have a property called Copper Mountain, uh, which has basically been dormant for, for quite a number of years, and they are potentially looking at reactivating that one. So you could add Myriad to your uh, watch list as well. Uh, and as I said right at the start, I also have a position in Fission Uranium. That's a Canadian company. And, uh, and I also have a position in Paladin, which is the Australian uranium miner that has just moved to acquire fission. If we look at some of the uh, graphs here, some of, uh, from a fundamentals point of view, earnings per share growth for Cameco has been pretty good over the last two years or so. We expect that to continue, but the analysts are, as I said, getting a little bit ahead of themselves. Net income growth as well is trending positively. That's good too. Uh, support and resistance 34 and 66. And this is interesting, right? So uh, this is from RBC Invest Direct. RBC is Royal Bank of Canada Invest Direct. They're saying a stock price for long position, sort of in the mid 40s, right? That's what I was saying earlier. If it pulls back to sort of in the uh, mid 40 range, $45, $46, that'd probably be a nice buy at that price. This is a peer comparison. So you can sort of ignore the ones on the right hand side here and just look at the blue lines and see sort of where Cameco is sitting. Earnings per share growth at Cameco is improving and it's above the industry average. That's good news. Though sales growth is negative, that's uh, not good news, but uh, it's uranium and it's long-term contracts and there is demand and the demand is growing. So, you know, that's kind of a little bit uh, of a two-edged sword there. Cameco has been able to gain market share since its sales growth exceeded the industry average. That's good news. So bad news, good news. Income growth, there was no clear trend in the income growth of Canada at Cameco over the past five years. They've grown revenue, but of course, CapEx and other costs have increased as well. So we haven't really seen a good increase in free cash flow, which is a pity because that would have been really, really great. And if we look at the fundamentals sort of in picture forms, cash and equivalence is a horrible dip here. Uh, we don't want to see sort of cash and equivalence falling off a cliff. Of course, uh, there are long-term contracts, so this uh, spikes up and down, but this is not a good picture, just visually. Dividends, same thing here. We don't want to see dividends just being uh, cut or diminishing over time. Uh, but to be fair, this expresses the uh, dividends, uh, which is paid in, in uh, obviously, dollars and cents as a percentage. And the stock price has been on a tear. So that's one of the reasons why you see that awful looking graph over there. Shares outstanding uh, on the up. We don't want to see that either because it dilutes existing shareholders. And the debt to equity ratio, again, a spike there, that's uh, not good either. So when you look at it from a fundamentals point of view, these are some of the reasons why it's bearish, in addition to the fact that um, Cameco missed the analyst's very aggressive uh, earnings expectation for the last quarter. And the price history, of course, as I said, has been on a tear, so it's been doing pretty good. I'm looking here at the balance sheet and to uh, really make it simple and summarize it for you right at the top of the total current assets and right at the bottom of the current liabilities. So if we compare these two, that's called the current ratio. 
So if I take the current assets and divide it by the current liabilities, I get a ratio of 1.42. So 1.4 billion in total current assets and right at the bottom, 1.302 current liabilities. So if I divide current assets by current liabilities, I get a ratio of 1.42. We want the current ratio to be greater than one. So this is a good ratio and shows you that Cameco is financially sound in terms of its current assets compared to its current liabilities. The uh, cash that I, re I referred to a minute ago when I was looking at the graphs can also be called the quick ratio where you compare your cash um, in your cash and cash equivalents on hand sometimes because some of them can be liquidated quickly to your current liabilities in terms of the bills you have to pay in the next 30, 60 days or so. That's got to be above one as well in order for you to be in a safe place. Now, this again from uh, Morningstar, this is the uh, sort of snapshot or picture of their um, uh risk report and their uh, earnings report, which is quite current. It's uh, dated the uh, 2nd of, of August. From a quantitative point of view, they're basically saying the price to fair value is less than one, right? So one to one would mean the stock is currently trading its fair value. Right now, Chemico is slightly overvalued. If you look at these two lines here in terms of their conversions, um, you have a black line, which is the last close and you have a fair value, which is that sort of pinkish line that's over there. So uh, these two lines have crossed over and the last close is now below the fair value, which Morningstar says is around $61. So the last close at around 52, I don't know where it's trading today, maybe 48 or something like that. If you can pick it up for 40 something, maybe 45, $46, it wouldn't be too bad because if you can hold it for about uh, you know a couple of years, two, three years or so, you can eat a fair value of $60 uh, on Cameco on a go forward basis. So um, I'd say be patient, be cautious, uh, but you know, as usual, uh, you guys are the experts and you can tell me what, what you think about Cameco. Is it a buy, a hold or a sell uh, right now? Uh, I would not sell my Cameco position right now. I've been in the position for about three years and um, I have quite a large position in Cameco. And because I've been in it for about three years and Cameco has been on a tear, uh, it's a pretty good solid position for me in terms of my return on investment. And, um, you know, I have a probably about a two and a half to three times um, return on investment. So it's almost a three X. So even when it pulls back 20, 25%, um, it's still looking good in terms of where it sits in my portfolio. But anyway, I have no plan to sell it right now. Uh, I might look to uh, take some cash off the table when it gets back to around $60 or so using that Morningstar fair value estimate as an example. Uh, but otherwise, I would just hold it. Um, right now might not be the perfect opportunity for you to open a new position, eh? but if you think differently, then you can tell us and educate uh, the rest of the people on the channel. But for me right now, it's mostly a hold. So that's my take on Cameco with a little bit of uh, backdrop or background included on uranium and nuclear energy. So let me think what you let me know what you think in the comments and we can take the uh, conversation further there. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.